what's happening YouTube right behind me we're gonna start removing the catalytic converter on this Ford Escape but this is gonna be the same as your Mazda Tribute and your Mercury Mariner so this intro is gonna seem like it's really long but keeping with show code when I'm able to not only show you how to do something well but I'm able to show you exactly why you're doing it or is just as important, especially in this situation when you're replacing a catalytic converter on one of these. So my name is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair, and this is the Clay Way. We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and sponsored by Accurate Engines. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on Facebook. I'm happy to answer them. It's a lot easier than answering the comments down below. Remember, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. The Clayway is the only channel where we fix cars just like that one that you seen just a moment ago that we're about to show you putting this nut and bolt catalytic converter in on the back side of the V6 engine, which is, for me, it was pretty easy. But you're going to have some complications. But like I said, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. I explain to you what you can do at home and how you can get this done in your driveway and hopefully have it done the very same day. If this video is helpful, please give me them thumbs up, share this video, and send me your really nice comments down below. The Clayway is the only place that we repair cars just like this one, give them away to needy families. And if you're interested in seeing this vehicle given away, Subscribe and click the notifications and you'll be able to see it given away in the not so distant future. If you need an engine or you need any kind of service, we service engines nationwide. You can send them over here to us at Accurate Engines. We'll fix them up and send them right back to you. They come with a three year, 100,000 mile warranty. And you can also get your very own video of your engine being built for your car. Okay, so like I said, the how is just as important as the why. In this situation, this customer that used to own this vehicle before it was mine and we were getting ready to give it away, had a misfire. They continued to drive the vehicle and as they drove the vehicle, fuel dropped down into the exhaust and because the exhaust gets superheated, it ignited and blew the particles away. Now, there's a couple of reasons that you don't wanna have that happen. This is going to become very expensive and extremely time consuming and could cause severe damage to your engine. If you have a misfire in these vehicles or in any vehicle, most of the time it's usually a bad coil on these Fords. It could be the spark plugs and doing a tune up on one of these Ford Escapes, even though it seems terrible, you can actually look on my channel and I show you exactly how simple it is to actually replace these spark plugs and coils that are in the rear of these V6 engines. Okay, so the situation is, is your exhaust is not escaping out of your engine. What'll happen is, is it'll eventually, not only will it burn up your catalytic converter, it'll burn up the edges of your valves, allowing loss of compression and lots of other problems. So, continuing to drive your vehicle with bad spark plugs or bad coils in this situation could be extremely detrimental to your engine's health. So if you look at the edges of these valves, they're extremely thin and prolonged back compression that the catalytic converter causes will cause your engine to burn up and the valves will not seat properly. Okay, so we've got the catalytic converters out and this is our new catalytic converter and we can see how there's a bunch of squares inside there. Then this is our old catalytic converter and it's all broken up and destroyed on the inside, not allowing that air to go through there. There's a couple things that you can do to actually check these. I tried it on this one and the, it actually passed the test, but because of the symptoms, it not having much power, using tons of fuel, and just overall you press on the gas and you're like, you know it's not right. It didn't, it passed that test, which surprised me a lot, but because of my knowledge, I knew it was bad. You can remove your O2 sensor, stick what's called a back pressure tester in there and see if this is plugged. You can look underneath the vehicle at nighttime and see if this gets 
cherry red. You can check the temperature with the temperature gauge and see what the temperature is here and see what the temperature is here. And that'll tell you if there's a huge variance of like 200 degrees or even 150 degrees that you have a catalytic converter that is not flowing properly. You can also take water and run it through there if you're still not sure or you're unable to look in other parts of it, like not being able to see down inside this area right here. You can also pass some light through it once you remove it, but at that point, you probably already have a new catalytic converter and that won't be very helpful to you. Generally, these catalytic converters go defective because you have a misfire in your engine, allowing raw fuel to drop down inside the engine and ignite over time destroying the catalytic converter, and possibly destroying your valves, even though that's extremely uncommon. So hopefully you folks feel a little bit more knowledgeable on not only why you're changing this, or how to change this catalytic converter, but also why you're changing it. Remember, the why is always just important as the how. Let's get going and get this sucker taken out so you can get your ride back on the road and keep your family safe. And we can give this sucker away. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop the bonnet and loosen up the eight millimeter screw and remove the positive side of the battery cable. Going over the passenger side, we're gonna remove that 17 millimeter bolt or nut that is right here on the end of the motor mount. Some situations it's 18, some situations it's 17. Now we're going to put the vehicle up on jack stands. Now there's two different places that you can jack the vehicle up. Preferably underneath here on what would be considered the frame of a vehicle, but on the pinch weld. And the pinch weld is a doubled up piece of metal that runs along the bottom of the door at the door jams. I prefer to put mine on the subframe portion of the vehicle. Once it's raised up safe, we're going to take the five 19 millimeter lug nuts off the wheel and remove the wheel. So we need to remove a couple of things here. The axle nut, which is 32 millimeters and eventually remove the axle. So we're gonna end up removing these nuts off of the strut and moving the spindle out. Now the bolts that are holding our strut to the control arm are 18 millimeter on both sides. Now to get these two bolts out, you can take a punch or you can twist the nut onto the end of there a little bit so you can drive it in there and then push it the rest of the way through with the punch. Now taking a 10 millimeter, we're gonna remove the 10 millimeter bolt that is secure in our ABS wire and our brake line to the strut. Now taking a pair of pliers, or if yours is not all rusty like that, you can take a screwdriver and we can pry this back. This clip slides off like this so we can get the brake line out of the holder. Now pushing down on the clip on the line when it's not frozen in there will allow it to come up and slide out. Now it's really not necessary, but you could put a jack underneath the control arm before you go to remove these strut bolts. I almost never do it. You can pretty much manhandle this and put it up in and out of there fairly easy. If this isn't easy enough to tap out of there, you want to make sure that you put your nut on there before you go to remove the axle so you don't bend up the threads on the axle and have to replace this portion of the axle. I only screw mine on a couple of threads. Generally, when you get the axle pushed in, it'll come out the rest of the way once it moves a little bit. As you're hitting on that, you can pull out to remove the control arm, and then it won't be pushing that up against the axle, and the axle should collapse. It'll, on itself, you usually need to hit it a little bit harder than I am to get it to break free out of the wheel bearing. I'm going to remove the two seven millimeter bolts that are securing the caliper to the rotor. Now we're going to remove the little clips on the outside of the brake. Now we can take a zip tie and we can hang the caliper 
to the spring. Notice I just use a screwdriver if I need to reconnect the two parts. Now we're going to work on getting that axle out of the spindle. I basically pull back on it. I have to take a hammer at one point and just give it a couple of taps to get it moved around and out of there. I lift the ABS wire up over the control arm connection and good. Okay, up on the top of our axle right here, there's two 13 millimeter nuts. We're going to pull them 13 millimeter nuts off, which is going to allow us to remove our whole intermediate shaft. Now it's going to, when we remove that, it may drain transmission fluid out of there. So we want to make sure that we have a catch pan underneath it to catch that transmission fluid that's going to come out. It's not going to be too much. Now, when I'm taking these nuts off, I use an extension with the 13 millimeter wobble to be able to get at them. Now, with the two nuts out of there, we should be able to reach up in there and quite simply pull it out. I'll need to do some maneuvering with both hands. Now, that gives us ample room to maneuver our alternator out of the original location. Okay, to get on the upper bolt of the alternator, I use a long extension that runs just like this. And that allows me to use pneumatics to get it out. Obviously, you could just take a ratchet and turn it out that way. Now taking a 10 millimeter, we're going to remove the couple of screws that hold on the splash cover. Now with the shroud removed, we can take a half inch drive ratchet, stick it in there, turning it clockwise to move it this direction to loosen our belt so we can remove it from our alternator. Now grabbing a long extension with our wobble, I'm going to show you a simpler way to get all three alternator bolts out. Coming from underneath the vehicle, we're going to go up above this bar. Doing it this way will allow us to get right on the bolt and easily remove it. Now to get on the two lower bolts, you can just use a regular ratchet with an extension, but in my case, I'm going to use an extra long gear wrench, 13 millimeter. Now I know on some of these vehicles, they have covers over them. And I really wish there wasn't a hack that worked on this before because them covers are kind of important. Uh, they actually dissipate the heat away from the alternator, making it last longer. Sorry that I wasn't able to show you that on this video, but I do have another video that shows you how to take them off, showing you how to remove a Ford Escape alternator, but this video is actually a lot better and simpler. So we can take our oxygen sensor and unplug it and then we'll be able to maneuver our alternator around to get our wires off the back of it. Now we're going to raise the engine with the block of wood and the reason that we're using a block of wood is because we don't want the metal from your jack to contact the oil pan because you may crack it. I also generally tend to try to lift from this area but not trying to lift the exhaust. I thought I would show you the space that I have between the engine and the mount while I'm jacking it up. I think this will be helpful for you folks at home. Now I'm going to reach my hand underneath there and spin the alternator. With having our alternator flipped around, that allows us easy access to get our 10 millimeter nut off. Make sure you save that. Don't take it to the rebuilder because it might not be returned. And our electrical connector on there. Our electrical connector is held on by a little pushy. We need to push down on this pushy, and if it doesn't release, pull it towards the unit and then pry it back. It took me two hands, but I was able to get it with my thumb. Okay, spinning the alternator pretty much back to its original location like you were going to mount it allows you to pull it out the hole successfully. I want you folks to know that I had a problem installing this, so I made a video of removal and installation of this alternator. It's actually more encompassing than this video carries, but I was trying to keep this video as short as possible. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the cross member pipe that goes from the one catalytic converter to the second catalytic converter, and then back there. Most of the time, these are held on by 17 millimeter nuts. In my situation, one's been replaced, so it's a little bit smaller. And if you think these things look super rusty and you don't want to take the risk of breaking them off, which really won't matter if you're changing both cats like me, 
get a little propane torch and I'll show you that. Take a little propane torch just like this. You can get this at Walmart for like 15 bucks for this whole setup. And you're gonna heat the nut up, not the stud. So you will apply the heat directly. Try applying the heat directly to the nut and not as much heat on the stud because you're gonna wanna expand this nut. Be careful not to catch anything on fire and if you have a lot of oil, you need to clean that up prior to using the torch like this. The ability to heat these nuts up is gonna be helpful because on the back side, there's nowhere to hold this. And if you were to use a big breaker bar and you broke the gnarls on the tip of the bolt, that when it's not a bolt, just like these are supposed to be factory, it will spin inside there and then you're gonna to have to sawzaw it. Which you could sawzaw it as well because of the simple fact that your new catalytic converters will come with studs. Okay, so in the past, we replaced this little accordion section. I actually have great video showing you where I got these clamps and stuff like that. But if you don't have these clamps and this is defective, you can get this from the parts store very cheaply. And these clamps are 10 to $12 each and they seal up excellent. So we're gonna remove that and then remove the final portion of our exhaust so we can drop our catalytic converters out of there. Okay, so the EGR, the tube that is connected to the exhaust manifold is one and one sixteenth. The problem is it's so long, you don't have any room to swing it. You could put a little bit of penetrant on it, but better yet would be heat to loosen it up. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to get these off super fast if you have an air hammer available. So I'm gonna set my air hammer up with a pick bit on the end of it. And because I have it available to me, I'm gonna use some heat and I'm gonna heat up this nut up here and we're gonna knock it out of there. Most of the time with the air hammer, you don't necessarily have to put heat on it but it does help loosen it up. It also makes the nut a little bit weaker. So be careful when you're using the air hammer not to break the nut. I generally only put the air hammer on one portion of the nut itself to keep it from destroying it. All I need to do is loosen the nut a little bit to get it to turn. Even with the heat, after time, these are extremely hard to get off. And I can certainly see where in your driveway you may end up breaking this too, but that's okay. You can replace it with a new one from the store if it becomes too much of a burden and just cut it off. Now, once I got it a little bit loose, I can just take my wrench and I'll be able to turn it off and it'll spin right off. Okay, so up there is that green plug. That is for your O2 sensor. You can either unplug that from down here or up above, but it was easy enough for me to just reach my arm up underneath there, push on a little tab, right there and pull it out now up on the exhaust manifold i have six nuts that i need to remove and they're pretty easy to get with my left arm going from underneath here and right up onto the exhaust manifold i should be able to remove all six of them rather easily now i'm going to pull down on the little plastic clip that holds my o2 sensor to the oil pan if you're using an aftermarket eBay exhaust manifold, or just about any manifold, catalytic converter I mean, you want to mark it because right here, you may need to bend the shroud on the new one that you got, or it may hit your axle. And you would have your alternator in there and everything, and that would be a travesty. Just because I like alternative ways of doing things, we could take a long extension and move it up there to remove our 13 millimeter nuts. Or if you're so inclined, you can go around the back side of the intake and remove the 13 millimeter nuts that way as well. And taking your arm and coming from up down here, you can get back there and fill the nuts fairly easily. Okay, something that I wanted to point out to you folks, when you're removing these exhaust manifold studs, make sure that you have the socket on there squarely. 
and it doesn't start to turn kitty wampus like that. If it does, you have the likelihood of breaking this stud off in the cylinder head and creating more work for you. Also, I use a long extension quarter inch drive to remove these 13 millimeter bolts. You could go down to Menards and they don't sell a snap on one down there, but they have a $20 one that I have that's actually pretty darn good and will work great at loosening up them bolts and them nuts. Some of the nuts come off, some of the studs come out. Now with the bolts and the nuts undone, you should be able to maneuver it out of the hole. Now with taking a look at our old cat and our new cat, we can see that this angle right here either needs to be ground off, hit down with a hammer, so it doesn't appear with our axle. This actually comes out quite a bit, so we need to rectify that. clean up the surfaces, and put on your new gaskets. Also during reinstallation, I highly recommend that you put all the studs and nuts up there, but don't tighten anything down. Then put your lower portion of your exhaust pipe on, both pieces, then snugging up all the nuts and bolts that hold all of it down. The reason for that is, is because you may not be able to get stuff to start once you bolt everything down and you don't want to have that situation where there just isn't a little bit of movement that you'll need. These things are made overseas and they're not exactly specified, you know, specific. And I don't think they care too much about if their jigs are off for a little bit or whatever. So save yourself some hassle. Just put things on loosely, then tighten everything up once your whole exhaust system is bolted together. If you haven't done it already, your O2 sensor can come out. It's not necessary for it to come out before you remove the catalytic converter. Mine was loose because I did a back pressure test on it, so I did take it out before I removed the exhaust manifold catalytic converter. Also, prior to installation, make sure all of your nuts fit on your new exhaust components. If necessary, replace them. One other thing that you might want to consider doing during the removal of this alternator is take it down and have it remanufactured, rebuilt at your local starter alternator place. It'll save you some trouble in the future if your vehicle's got over 120, 130,000 miles. I highly recommend you do that unless you don't mind pulling that alternator again later. They usually go to effective anywhere between 120 and 200,000 miles. So I got this all done and it still was driving a little bit funny and super quiet. And I've got a ton of catalytic converter material from my cat that was bad here in the back up in there plugging my exhaust up so we're gonna have to get another one of these but this is pretty self-explanatory to change you want to check that if yours was broken up like mine nasty man i hope you got your car running and she's rolling down the road real smooth and everything's good and you did it on the cheap so if this video was helpful please consider subscribing please share my videos put on one of my sweet clayway playlists for at nighttime while you're sleeping on your computer Turn that volume down. Let them suckers play. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Stay tuned to the channel as we give this car away. Think of me down here at Accurate Engine. I greatly appreciate y'all. Don't be the next of them. Be the first of you. And if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. God bless and have the best of days.